Hello, everybody, and welcome to... Nope. 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 <laughs> I can do it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Two Weird Didn't Watch, the show where we make fun of movies that we have not seen based on nothing but their weird descriptions. I am Brantley. I am Albert. And today, we're going to do a trilogy, Brantley. The right. Robo Vampire Trilogy. I have to say... So it's like Nos 4A2 from Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Isn't that the Joe Hill book? No, we discussed this on Human Echoes the first time it was on there. But it is a character made by Evil Emperor Zerg, who is a robot who drains energy from other vampires by biting them and is basically Robot Dracula. Okay. And his name is NOS, the number four, letter A, and number two. Well, we're going to be talking about Robo Vampire, Robo Vampire 2, and Robo Vampire 3. And I'm calling these a trilogy. However, this is one of those situations where... It's in name only? In name only, and the uniting force in this trilogy is that in America they were marketed with a man who looks remarkably like RoboCop on the cover. <laughs> like, exactly like Rob. There's just no no difference between this man and RoboCop. And... Well, people like RoboCop. Well, yeah, but I think he's a copyrighted figure, Brentley. Shh. So let's start things off with Robo Vampire. Narcotics agent Tom Wilde is given a second chance at life after being shot and killed. That doesn't, man, this is a really interesting premise for a movie, Brantley. Mm -hmm. In a futuristic experiment, Agent Wilde is returned to life as an android robot. Right. <laughs> Again, stop me if any of this sounds familiar to you. He is sent on a very dangerous mission into the depths of the Golden Triangle. Yeah, we've done this movie. We have? Yeah, because you discussed what the Golden Triangle was and you went on a Google search. Well, boogers. Well, you know what? This is, we're we're going to do it anyway, so we can do Rebel Vampire 2 and Rebel Vampire 3. I mean, we can brush up on it. He goes into the Golden Triangle to rescue Sophie, a beautiful undercover agent. Who has been captured by the evil drug warlord, Mr. Young, and his inhuman creation, the Vampire Beast. Mm -hmm. So, we have we have covered that one in the past, Brentley. Yes. We have not, though, covered the two quote-unquote sequels to Robo Vampire. Woo! Robo Vampire 2, The Devil's Dynamite. Also known as just Devil's Dynamite, which is an awesome name. <laughs> Robo Vampire 2- It blows two you up and then it seals your soul. I wasn't thinking about the literal interpretation of that, but yes, like, <laughs> haunted dino... It's like the dead man's gun, but it's just a hand grenade. <laughs> Whoever's died by the dynamite comes for revenge! <sighs> Robo Vampire 2 Devil's Dynamite opens with some kung fu black magic going on. Well, okay. Karate kangaroo hopping vampires are revived from their co coffins. And go in search of human blood. Okay, so the Japanese vampires got gotcha. you. Yeah. Provided by their evil criminal bosses. Supposed to their moral criminal bosses. <laughs> the the E is like accentuated in the description. That was not my editorial choice, by the way. <laughs> now the drugs can flow with vampire assistance. Alright. Ninjas attack! Okay. They're no match for the jumping dead! How do you respond to that? <laughs> why are why do the vampires in Japan jump, Brantley? In China? Oh, is it China? Sorry. Yes. I, they just do. They hop and they also do this like jerky arm motion where they hold them straight up, point them up at the elbow, and then go right back down while they so jump. So they're doing the Buzz Lightyear karate chop. Basically, yeah, thing? while bouncing. It's very bizarre. I need to see this now. A story almost develops, but more hopping vampires must battle a silver-suited spaceman. Apparently, a man named Steve Cox has something to do with this cluster fudge. Language. Also not editorializing, that's actually how they wrote it. So it's a PG <laughs> horror movie? <laughs> we can have all the killing we want, but no cursing. That would be wrong. He's apparently been released from prison and dresses like a fedora-wearing vicar. Okay. So we have... Rabbit vampire ninjas. Kangaroo hopping. Right. Well, I, I like the... Rabbits are funnier. Are Kangaroos they? are actually dangerous. Yeah, they are. There's just ninjas. There's a silver-suited spaceman. <laughs> and into the midst of all this strides Steve Cox, who has been released from prison and dresses like a fedora-wearing vicar. 
Right. But I think this this is one of those plot spaghetti kind of movies where yes. or not not spaghetti goulash where they just said we've got a movie what are some cool things ninjas great ninjas on the list vampires vampires on the list karate vampires on the list space people yep we got that one people released from prison wearing cool hats yep and they dress Dressed like, like a Neo from the the second ninja cool all right what are we from the second ninja. Uh, uh, Neo from the second Matrix is what I meant to say. <laughs> okay. Doesn't he dress like a... He has like that weird backward collar Yeah, I guess that kind of makes... That's kind of what he's wearing. I never quite understood what he had going on there. And that movie was a thing. I was I assumed that it was intentional religious overtones. It probably was, but I saw it when I was younger and didn't care. He also kung fus like nobody's business. Other gangster vickers arrive. And thus, the best description that I could find for Robo Vampire 2 screeches to a halt that was actually taken from a review Brantley so that's why it doesn't All have right. a satisfying conclusion the uh, description of that one was a little bit less in depth I, I like the idea of gangster vickers <laughs> just a bunch of guys who are all like frocked out and wearing fedoras mm -hmm. and then they're fighting the robot vampires are they on Steve Cox's side or do you think he has to fight them too he probably has to fight everyone I would imagine I've, there's the a world I, I have to take a second to give a plug to a thing I've been using a lot. Um, it's a product called uh, Pluto TV, and it's essentially like old school television on the Internet. Right. They just play like you can just turn it on and whatever's on is on and then they play commercials. OK, it's 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 weird that they've gone back to that model, but it's also has some really cool stuff on it. One of the channels they have is called Flicks of Fury. And it's just a like endless string of old Chinese or Japanese martial arts movies. I don't watch those though. Usually I'm on the uh, MST3K and or uh, Rift Tracks channel. But I could okay. see this thing playing on there at some point. Hmm. Finally, we have Robo Vampire Three. The vampire is still alive. Okay. <laughs> just a nice declarative like. Just so you get. So what is he dead during two? But then it turns out <laughs> he know. was alive all along. In the in the if we're entertaining the fiction that these are somehow linked, yes, yes. He just wasn't in the second movie. Well, it's I think it's probably like a Jason four or five situation, right? Where you you make another Friday the Thirteenth movie, but it's not actually Jason, and then he's he comes back in the sixth one. Jason lives. Screenwriter Joyce moves okay. to a remote old house so she can work on a script. Okay. People writing about writing, Brantley, always the best. That's fine. She winds... It actually is. I'm sorry. Sometimes, sometimes it feels a little bit self-congratulatory. Uh, so, like, 90% of what Stephen King does. Yeah, but he does it, like, a lot of times when oh, he so does he do it. Pass. It's good. That's what you you said. It's fine. And that, when I thought about some of the stuff Stephen King does, I was like, okay, yeah, you know what, it, it mm -hmm. is fine. She winds up being terrorized by a rot-faced, razor-fingered, Freddy Krueger-esque, freaky demon spirit dude. Is that how it's described? <laughs> That's exactly the sentence. Freddy Krueger Krueger-esque, freaky demon spirit dude are so, the words that the, someone wrote in the sentence. So this came out in the nineties, is what you're telling me. Well, I think that they, they were like, we've already ripped off RoboCop. I don't know what Robo Vampire 2 was ripping off something. Everything. And they're like, what What else is popular right now? Maybe Freddy Krueger? People are thirsting for more of those? So let's make a Japanese edition. Or Fair Chinese. Enough. Meanwhile, spunky lady private investor Jackie butts heads with a gang of nasty criminals. I gotta say, I like that there is a, several female leads here. Mm-hmm. I think it's been very male focused up until now. I like that we now. know she's spunky so we can roof her. Yes. Director Edgar Jair sloppily blends together two separate stories into a disjointed and barely coherent yet somehow oddly arresting and entertaining mess. Jair Clamp. This guy. This guy gets it. This writer. <laughs> he knows what we're about. This is a House of Frankenstein situation. Where Dracula shows up at the beginning and then just never <laughs> shows up again. They have a whole Dracula plot and then just, and we're out of, you know, time for that. We had a really short Dracula movie and a fairly short Frankenstein and the Wolfman movie, so we just put them together. we just keep making the same Wolfman versus Frankenstein movie over and over again, and Dracula doesn't fit in that storyline. Jer, Cla I keep trying to say clams. Jer, the clamps. 
Jer crams this flipped out flick with a nice smattering of gore and several all out wild martial arts fight scenes. I'm glad they've kept the martial arts throughout. Yes. Plus delivers a rousing shootout on a yacht. Okay. They've 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 sort of switched into. I think I took this one from a review, and I didn't realize how reviewy it got. But we're just going to keep going with it, really. <laughs> James Langdon's score alternates between shivery and shuddery ooga booga scare show <laughs> stuff and cool blast and rock. All right, so you've got those uh, those rising violins to build tension, and then in the air. As soon as things kick off, <laughs> whales fly wildly on the guitar. <laughs> Well, you gotta think, like, they are, like, melding together two very different stories, possibly two different movies that they're sort of editing together for an American audience. Right. <laughs> maybe maybe this Langton guy is, like, on board with that, and he's just like, just so you know. They did now that with... we're in the rock section. <laughs> they did that with the, uh, the Digimon movie, quote-unquote. Okay. Because in Japan, what they do is they OBAs. They do OBAs, which are about, like, 40 minutes TV specials. Uh-huh. But then when it came over to America, it's like, nah, Digimon's, Digimon's a hit. We have to have a full feature-length movie. So we'll take three of these, edit them down, and just kind of shoehorn them into one plot, which means they had to cover some scenes very quickly that were important to the plot. So at one point, one character tells another his backstory, and the second character starts breaking down in tears. So he's like, this is the story I've ever heard. And he's like, get over it. And he's like, okay. I've just realized, because I'm on the Amazon.com page for De- Robo- Vampire 2 Devil's Diamond. Yes. Dynamite. I knew that there was like a RoboCop 2. Listed here are several other RoboCop movies that I was not familiar with, Brentley. I know there's at least three of them. because one of those RoboCop are... Dark Justice. Is that the one where he gets a jetpack? I don't know. So RoboCop Meltdown. Jetpack. RoboCop Crash and Burn. RoboCop Resurrection, which is kind of the point of RoboCop to begin with. This might be a future episode in the making, Brentley. Okay. They're, they're, they're seeing it live. I didn't realize there were so many crappy RoboCop sequels. There you go, RoboCop 3. RoboCop 3, I get. It's so bad. <laughs> I it's get why, so the, awful. Yeah, but I've heard of it. The fact that they made more and like yeah, that I had not heard. Just direct like direct to DVD release somehow because these all look incredibly cheap. When did those come out? Um, I'm looking here. I can't. It doesn't say. Prime Directives is 2001. 2001. A Space Odyssey. So they they've just been putting them out. How, on how the have, down low. How have they still been putting out RoboCop movies that I haven't heard of? This is like, they're, they've got like 10 movies in the series now. To be fair, if it tells you anything about the quality, they're on there along with the Atlantic Rim. <laughs> yes. Well, they, and Robot Wars. They know my, they know my taste, friendly. Fair enough. Uh, I've got to read the, the final sentence of Robo Vampire 3, The Vampire is Still Alive. Adding to the lunacy are a Taoist monk with a pair of hopping vampire slaves, an obnoxious fat vampire kid, and a welcome it's last a pearl origin story of some third-rate RoboCop clone. So they did manage to bring it back around. Yes. They brought RoboCop into it. They're like, no, we know you saw RoboCop on the cover. We got you, fam. This is not going to be, like, some nonsense. The second one. You don't get RoboCop. You will get somebody who looks like RoboCop. Uh... We promise. Where was I going here? I do not know what you're doing. I wanna, I wanna read. I wanna, I wanna, wanna. RoboCop 2014. We're not doing RoboCop 2014. <laughs> no, it's not called RoboCop 2014. This is the one that came out. I know we're not doing it. Why not? <laughs> Dumb ideas. Why? Oh, okay. Well, I've got. You um... can't take things I suggest in jest and take it seriously. <laughs> Oh, I thought we were going to do RoboCop. If you want to do RoboCop, we can do RoboCop. But we're going to... We're padding out the episode, okay. really. This is padding because we did not have enough with the Robo Vampire because we'd already done the first one. This part is filler. The plot will not be included in this. <laughs> so, next up we have RoboCop. <laughs> the the reboot. Amazing. The remake. We have not seen RoboCop the remake. <laughs> and I can assure you, having seen the original, it's plenty <laughs> weird. <laughs> the year is 2040 no sorry 2028 I, I was gonna ridiculous Ooh, far future. the year is 2028 it's a whole 10 years from now oh man that's depressing <laughs> and multinational conglomerate omnicorp is at the center of robot technology kind of expect, expected it to be darpa brently yeah overseas they can navigate offices now <laughs> on their own does the fear of robots put you off at all? It amuses me. 
Okay. I, I think that we're going to... We've I've, I think we brought this up before. I think we're going to screw ourselves by being afraid of robots that can do things. Overseas, their drones have been used by the military for years. How many years exactly? Well... Less than ten? I mean, <laughs> we, we've been using drones now, so if they don't exist now, then yes. I guess. We you have know, Predator drones, we have those drone, you know, turret guns that can I shoot people that I thought they meant, like, ro- like, drone, like, walking around drones. Like, they can I kill mean, people. even in the old one, they had the Ed 209s. Yeah, well, that's what I was su- assuming. Did you know, by the way, they actually did develop, you know those those robot dogs everybody's been afraid of in those videos? Yes. They've developed something similar and it shows that there's there's a prototype of it, uh, not a prototype of it, but something like the same idea shows up in a Netflix film uh, where they're fighting ghosts, uh, which is pretty cool. I think it's called Ghost Wars. Mm-hmm. No, it's not Ghost Wars. I forget what it's called. But anyway, they developed robot dogs that could carry stuff around for soldiers in the field. Right. It's a real thing that mm-hmm. exists, but they couldn't use them because they're too loud. <laughs> for now. <laughs> Fido, shut up! Again, for <laughs> now. Just gotta work on smoothing out those servos. I guess. Good. So it's it's true to life to actual Robocop, because he's... <laughs> that whole movie. <laughs> I was like, can't walk very fast. Which made that one uh, event where he came onto WWE, because somebody was put in a cage by, you know, some heels, and he broke in to come release him. But he's wearing the Robocop suit, so he's barely able to walk. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, it's Robocop! <laughs> Now Omnicorp wants to bring their controversial technology to the home front. What's and controversial about it? I don't know. It's things we already use here now. Yes. Also, it's been incredibly successful. It's overseas. Where overseas. You know. I guess it's like, well, they're they're killing people and we don't want them to kill them. And, and other people are like, yeah, but they're brown people. So it's oh, fine. so this movie does not take place in America. What? I'm saying if they're against people getting killed by robots, it's clearly not American. Uh, well, some people are against... Like, they're, Controversy, Not the majority. Controversy doesn't have to be the majority, Brantley. When Alex Murphy, a loving husband, father, and good cop, so we know to care about him, doing his best to stem the tide of crime and corruption in Detroit, well, man, you that see, ship sailed by already, himself... Dude. You know, no wonder he's not doing anything. You gotta work with the system, man. It sucks, but you gotta do it. It's I'm gonna love Just it if we down. actually get to 2048 and Detroit has turned a corner and they're actually, like, doing pretty great right now. It's kind of like how L.A. is. Yeah. Into, like, the 80s. I, I, I really That's why, like, enjoyed, uh, Predator like, 2 is actually in the future of, like, the year 2000 when it came out. And that's why it's, like, an open war on the street with gangs just <laughs> shooting out of buildings. It's like, it's gonna be like that. And then you come to now, it's like, not, not, not really. <laughs> I really enjoy dystopian futures being completely inaccurate. Yes. Anyway. Let's when, keep that trend going, guys. When he's, he's critically injured in the line. Well, I mean, the President Trump thing is a little bit dystopian. Yeah. Uh, critically injured in the line of duty. Man, the, like, we everybody knows the plot of Robo- Robocop, right? Omnicorp- that really is like underselling what happened to him in the first Omnicorp sees their chance for a part man, part robot police officer, which seems... I still don't understand why that's the goal. Yeah. Just a robot would do... Because in the first one, the dude complains that is like... The guy mentions... Or scientists mentioned that, you know, Robocop is having some emotions and things. And the guy's like, you mean we got not just a training, but his baggage? It's like, you could just program a robot. Yeah. Well, especially because they already two, successfully I, I, programmed robots. I, I mean, to be job. fair, the Ed 209s do kind of have the issue with, you know, t- registering people. They don't have good recognition. Right, right. But this is a reboot. We've kind of got decent recognition now. There's also the problem of reproducibility. Like, yes. So the next, cor- the next sentence says, Omnicorp envisions a RoboCop in every city. You just got to wait around for some cops to get, like... Horribly, horribly it's injured. Like, it's like Hardcore Henry, where you just clone, you just like take the robots and just give them his mind. Have you seen Hardcore Henry? I have not finished you watching gotta, Hardcore, watch Hardcore Henry. Henry. So good. I did not find it very good. It is so good. Okay. That is one. That is possibly my favorite action movie of all time. Strong I'm, words. I'm from sorry, Brantley? Terminator Two, but you've been dethroned. Okay. Hard. I disagree with Brantley's opinion, but I respect his ability to have it. I will say it was a lot more fun in theater. With 3D glasses than it is just on your in, in your house. Oh wow, you guys see it in theater? Yeah, it's all with my dad and my brother, and that was awesome. Okay, so they envision a robot cop in every city, and of course, 
Even the more one. billions for their shareholders. Yes, only one Robocop. It's kind of an honorary position. We're going to go back to the, to the Wild West style. There'll be one officer. He's going to be a robot, though. <laughs> be great. What? As long as nobody shoots him in the freaking mouth. Or the hand in that movie, too, because they don't give him a robot hand on the right side for some reason. He'll be fine. The Everywhere else he's bulletproof. Not the mouth. Don't shield that at all. <laughs> But they never counted on one thing. And you know what it is, apparently, because they already discussed it. There is still a man inside the machine pursuing yes. justice. No, they did Why count did on that. They They're just dumb. Why are they so terrible at their job? Just, just program a robot. It seems like an obvious twist. That, like, yes, you've I, used a human person. He's going to still have human emotion. Twist. The fact that they only have one of this guy. Like... There are still actual regular cops in the city. Yes. That have guns and stuff. Like, the only difference is this guy has armor. Just give armor to the regular cops. He has well, nothing... that's the whole Batman issue. <laughs> he is, you know, the tools to solve every possible crime that ever happens, but he doesn't give it to any of the cops. Because <laughs> he's Batman. He's got to be the hero. <laughs> I, now I'm imagining a, a like a version of Batman where like the, he just makes stuff for the cops. All the police are just driving the Batmobile, but like in a bright like like blue and red color. Well, it could be like black and white. I guess it but could. But then they would have those, like the lights on top. It was cool the 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 cop cars around. Also, here the Batmobile the... is just a dumb concept because traffic is a thing. Nope, it could it can it's fly also or like, something. I it, don't know. That's the bad plane. <laughs> that's fine. Give that little like urban helicopter from The Dark Knight Rises to all the cops. You it's don't need cars drone. no more. You can just fly. In, in one of these, you know, in one of these reboots of Batman, it's just going to be like one of those four propeller drones that he flies around in. The least impressive version of Batman has been realized. I think that's the 30s serial. Or was it 40s? I think 40s. Oh, the serial. I thought you were hating on the um, the 60s version, which no, is no, awesome. No, 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 no. That is great. Okay. Batman and Robin is outstanding. Well, that is going to do it for this week <laughs> on Too Weird Didn't Watch. If you liked the episode, remember to tell a friend about us. Uh, spread the word about the hilarity that you have just experienced. Hopefully you've just experienced some hilarity, Brantley. I'm, and a listener, I'm assuming. I'm hoping. Please, Please. laugh. <laughs> Please we laugh. need your validation. <laughs> We're desperate for it. Like that, but not from one of us, because it doesn't count. <laughs> Don't forget, we also have a Patreon at <laughs> patreon.com slash two weird didn't watch where you can give us a money if that's their thing. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye.